So LG have announced a new bump to their OLED technology, the OLED EX. It's better and brighter, but will it be worth it? In this video, I'm going to break down what LG OLED EX is and what it will mean for the future of OLED TVs. So CES is right around the corner and LG have announced what they'll be showcasing as the star of the show. And that is the LG OLED EX. The EX is standing for Evolution Experience. That being a step up from last year's Evo panel and adding more experience? What? Now, this is where it gets interesting. These panels can get 30% brighter and have a 30% smaller bezel. And this is a huge jump. And this is because LG are introducing deuterium into their panels instead of hydrogen. And for some scientific reason that someone a lot smarter than me could probably explain, that makes the panels shine brighter and shine more efficiently too. But how will they fit this new technology into their 2022 lineup? Well, Last year, the Evo panels were only fitted into their Gallery Series TVs. You didn't get them in the A1, the B1, or even the most popular TV, the C1. It was only on their much more expensive model, the G1. So my initial theory is that LG would treat the OLED EX in the same way. The C2 would get the old Evo panel, and then the G2 should get this new technology. And I mean, that would make sense. But with more research, I'm reading and rereading LG's press release on this OLED EX. I spotted something. This quote here LG Display plans to strengthen its leadership and product competitiveness in the large size OLED business by integrating OLED EX technology into all the OLED TV displays manufactured at its OLED production plants in Peju, South Korea and Gangzhou, China, starting from the second quarter of 2022. Now, there's a lot to think about in this quote. First of all, all OLED TV displays. And just so we're clear, those are the only two OLED TV plants that LG have. So surely what this quote is saying is that this technology is going to go into every single OLED TV that they produce. And that isn't just the gallery series. And also also, this means that every single brand is going to benefit from this new technology because LG makes everyone's OLED TVs. Now the only issue I have is this part of the quote, starting from the second quarter of 2022. Now that means it's going to be starting at some point in April, May or June. Now historically we've seen these TVs dropping in spring, normally in April. So if April is the earliest that they might start production of these TVs, then when are we going to get them? Now I suspect we might not be getting these TVs into potentially June, if we're lucky, May. And other brands? Well, they might not be getting these panels until much later, which means they might start a foot behind LG in this year's TV race. Or alternatively, they might be stuck with old panels until 2023. So this is definitely going to be something to watch, and only time will tell. Now the other potential issue is going to be the price. Now, I don't think these TVs are going to go massively up in price, but deuterium is a much rarer element than hydrogen. It is much harder to get a hold of, and LG even mentions this in their press release. They state that hydrogen is 6,000 times more common than deuterium. So I suspect if LG are planning on bringing this technology to every single panel this year, that prices aren't going to be going down. I would expect the starting prices for these TVs to either maintain or potentially even go up slightly. However, I do potentially think that larger size TVs might come down slightly in price due to the increasing popularity of them. That's TVs that would be 75 inches plus. But ultimately, now we don't know. We'll have to wait. But click this video here to see all of my predictions for this year's TVs and click this video to see another one and subscribe. Whoop!